Hello, everybody. My name is Judy Bosworth, and I'm the supervisor of the town of North Hempstead. Thank you for joining our virtual Halloween special. I'm so happy that you're spending some time with me and our town board during our reading of The Night Before Halloween by Natasha Wink and illustrated by Cynthia Fisher, as well as Room on the Broom by Julia Donaldson, and it's illustrated by Axel Schleffer. Afterwards, we're going to have some footage from our previous Halloween events for you all to enjoy, and we're going to teach you how to make some delicious Halloween treats as well. So let's get started and read these Halloween favorites. So many children have enjoyed them, and I hope you do too. So the first one is Natasha Wings, The Night Before Halloween. And listen carefully, see if you can see some similarities to another holiday favorite. I'll give you a hint. It was the night before Christmas, but this one is The Night Before Halloween. Cool picture, right? Twas the night before Halloween, and all through the house, all the creatures were stirring except for the mouse. The monsters had gathered to plan and prepare for the trick or treaters who soon would be there. Mummies unraveled and put on new wraps. Spiders found corners and spun silky traps. Count Dracula grinned and slicked back his hair. Frankenstein's bride cried, I've nothing to wear. Hurry up, said a ghoul who started to yawn. There's so much to do before bedtime at dawn. So the witches brewed up a magical potion, which set every monster and goblin in motion. They blew up balloons and hung streamers and lights and decorated till the wee hours of night. Meanwhile, the children were tucked in their beds while visions of candy corn danced in their heads. In the moon when they woke, it was Halloween day. There was bobbing for apples and rides in the hay. There were costume parties and games to be played. Cupcakes and candy and of course, a parade. After dinner was served and the kids were done eating, it was finally time to go trick or treating. Moms repainted faces and straightened clown hats, put wings back on fairies, angels and bats. Jack-o'-lanterns were set out on porches with care. The grin seemed to say, knock if you dare. Gypsies and pirates and zombies and rags grabbed their bright flashlights and trick-or-treat bags. They walked down each lane, avenue and street, rang every doorbell and said, trick-or-treat. But just when the children thought they were done, the princess said, We've forgotten just one. So they walked to the house at the top of the hill, which gave all the kids a spine-tingling thrill. They stood on the porch and were ready to knock when they heard heavy footsteps and a turn of the lock. When what to their curious eyes should loom but a wicked old witch holding a broom, her cape, how it shimmered, her face, oh, how scary. Her hat was so pointy, it frightened the fairy. The wicked witch said, welcome, we have a surprise. And the children yelled, run, it's not a disguise. The monsters were sad when the kids ran away. They wanted the children to come in and play. The wicked witch said, we can have our own fun. Come on, little monsters, the night's just begun. The monsters all cheered as they danced with delight. Happy Halloween to all. And to all a fright night. 
Hello, I'm North Hempstead Town Supervisor Judy Bosworth. And I'm Town Councilman Peter Zuckerman. For over 25 years, the Town of North Hempstead has held Spooky Walk here at Clark Botanic Gardens. And each year, it gets better and better. And scarier. Well, I think it's scarier. There's so much hard work, planning, and creativity that goes into Spooky Walk. We thought you might enjoy seeing what goes on behind the scenes to make the magic happen. It's not going to be too scary, is it? Don't worry. I'll tell you when to close your eyes. So we're just setting up for our zombie cage little area. Um, we have some pallets set up over there and we're gonna set up a few more and some dummies spread out. This guy's a little scarecrow character, another dummy. This is the head for our little zombie guy that's gonna go in the cage, so we're gonna prop him up and he's gonna be perfect. The zombie cage is cool because you see this guy uh, from far away, you think it's like a real person and it's really not, so. And then we have volunteers that we might switch it up, have a volunteer jump in there and scare the people as they walk by, so it's pretty cool. Here is our dummy, and if we have inclement weather, uh, sometimes what we'll do is we bag up all the dummies so the rain doesn't affect them. You know, obviously they're not drenched. And then uh, before the event, we'll cut them, we'll take them off, and then uh, get ready for the event. Um, but we are prepped for the weather. If it were to happen, um, we're ready. So we kind of know, you know, whether it's tarps over things um, or whether like bagging a dummy like that. Depending, you know, when it comes down to the wire, we'll need some more help, but uh, usually it takes a few weeks to yeah, set up. two to three weeks, I would Two say. to three weeks. The setup is fairly extensive, helps having good weather. Essentially what we do October 1 is we create a schedule where we say we need this done by October 1st, this October 2nd. That's just like the, the physical setup of the guillotines, the tables, the torture racks, the jail cells, the Stonehenge. Right here we have some guillotine set up. Um, we have some the graveyard scene right here in the back. And then if you actually, if you turn around, we have Stonehenge, which is pretty big. And uh, a lot of work went into that. And they used uh, the leftover foam that they would put into a dock and put in the water, a floating dock. So uh, John's really good with that stuff, very creative. And we came, he came up with that. Um, we spray painted them and uh, we bolted them in. So, and then we put them in the ground so you know they don't knock over. The people actually will trickle in from the entrance through the back woods and they'll come right through this area. So this is like the first big area that they see. I, I would say the whole thing is really a big attraction. You know, from the, the moment you walk in with the, the carnival rides and the food and everything, I just think the environment is uh, very appealing. You know, when people come in and you're, you're outside the whole time. This we've had for a few years now. Um, it, it came from John the Carpenter, Aloysio uh, uh, from the trades crew. We have it staked right now just to keep it stationary and then we'll, we'll kind of move it out to its, and kind of have some play on the ropes that it kind of moves around on its own. We re-spray painted it and made it look nice again, you know. At nighttime it looks pretty cool. We come here and we volunteer and uh, they give us various jobs here, but this time of year is very special because it's the spooky walk. So we come here um, every year and we do this. And then what we usually do too is during the spooky walk time, um, we actually bring the students from all the other classes to the walk. I mean, we come during the day, they say it's really spooky at night, but we come during the day so that the kids kind of get to see what, they, you know, what they've done and how they contributed to putting the whole spooky walk together. You know, even though they're just filling sand jugs, it's, they still know they're contributing and they love it. They absolutely love it. For 12 years, it's been that BOCES group that puts the candles together, puts the sand in the milk jugs, puts the candle, and then they lay them out on the path. And the wildest thing about the event is my volunteers who will come this week are the same children who went to this event 15 years ago. I like it because it's good for the community. You know, it gets, gets everyone out, the neighborhood, and it's, uh, it's definitely fun, you know? My family comes. All ages come, and then on the Sunday, they have it for like the, the really young toddlers and stuff, the not so spooky walk. It's close to home, you know, everybody, it's just, and, and that's, that's the beauty of Clark. It's wherever you live in North Hempstead, it's, you know, five, ten minutes from your home. You could be in Great Neck, you could be in Westbury, New Hyde Park, Port Washington, and five, ten minutes away. And say if we get 10,000 people in here over the course of the three days, which is generally our average, 
That's now 10,000 people who now know where Clark Botanic Garden is, uh, and, and they develop an appreciation for it. When you hold events like this, it just exposes your best side to the public. It shows, you know, what, the way we uh, put everything out, it, it looks nice at the end of the day, it looks nice, you know, people enjoy it. And all we want to do is provide a great event for our residents. Welcome to the cooking lab. I am Chef Matt. Let's celebrate Halloween together and let's cook some spooky uh, chocolate pumpkin muffin. Uh, we are going to need a lot of things today uh, to make this happen, but it's a very simple recipe and it will be a lot of fun and will impress all your friends. So, uh, in terms of equipment, of course, you will need a uh, big bowl. Uh, this is where we are going to do our uh, muffin uh, mix. We will need a whisk uh, and then eventually you will, uh, you will, uh, you will change with using a, a wooden spoon and a spatula. The mold. So we are going to use, you can use a regular uh, muffin pan that works, uh, but we are going to, uh, because it's Halloween, we are going to use this pan, this skull uh, mold, and this is going to be very impressive finish. We have some ingredients today. So to do the muffin, we will need uh, some, uh, so let's start with the sugar, about two cups sugar. You will need, uh, you know, a small can, it's a 15 ounce uh, pumpkin puree. You will need about four eggs and a cup and a half of canola oil. For the dry ingredients, you will need about three cups of flour, you will need some, uh, some, some salt, a teaspoon of salt. You will use one teaspoon of baking powder and you will need about two teaspoons of baking soda. Now, the spice, you need some pumpkin spice. We are going to make our own. It's about a tablespoon of, uh, of spice in total. Uh, what is it? We are going to have one and a half teaspoon of cinnamon. We will have half a teaspoon of nutmeg. Uh, one, uh, one quarter teaspoon of allspice and one teaspoon of ground ginger. Uh, All together, it's almost a tablespoon, but uh, that, will be a, that will give a nice flavor to your muffin. And of course, uh, it won't be a chocolate muffin if we don't have chocolate. So you will have about two cups chocolates and a little extra that we will sprinkle on top of the, uh, of the muffin just before we put them in the oven. Now, uh, for to make them extra spooky, we are going to make a glaze. We are going to glaze them. So if you have, a, for the glaze, we will use about a, uh, one uh, cup and a quarter of confectioner sugar that you will uh, pr um, sift uh, so it's very thin and fine and you don't end up with big lumps of sugar. You will use about two tablespoons of milk, uh, half a teaspoon of vanilla, we will use one tablespoon of light corn syrup and finally a tablespoon of melted butter. All right, so are we ready? Let's, let's cook. So first we are going to break our eggs uh, directly in the bowl, making sure we don't put any shelf, of course, because we don't want crunchy muffin. Now, very good. And now the goal is going to uh, get rid of the viscosity of the white. So we are going to beat a little bit the egg, just a tiny bit, until they are a little frosty. Not frosty, but bubbly. Just get rid of this viscous white. And then we are going to add our sugar. And all you want is making sure you mix this white and the eggs very well together. You can use a hand mixer, but no matter what, you need to make sure you clean the side of your bowl, okay? 
it takes a little while for the sugar to dissolve properly in the liquid. So just make sure you do you whisk it for a solid minute or so. And always, always make sure you always clean the side of your bowl. When you're tired, all you have to do, cup, you change hand. And again, make sure you clean the side of your bowl. When you, once you have your egg well incorporated in the sugar, we are going to add our uh, pumpkin puree. Just mix it quickly. So it looks smooth already. I love the color. This is a very, very autumn looking muffin. And then we incorporate the oil. And now we are going to simply whisk until we obtain a nice smooth mixture. And again, always making sure we clean the side of our bowl. You don't want to see any floating oil. You really want to mix this until it's very nice and smooth. Voila, like that. And now we are going to work on our dry ingredients. So for our dry ingredients, we have our flour. I'm going to add the salt. I'm going to add my uh, baking powder, my baking soda and uh, those famous uh, nutmeg, ground ginger, allspice and cinnamon mixed together. Now I'm going to aerate a little bit, mix it and aerate this flour. If you want to seed the flour, it's always recommended. I did mine. Try not to put it everywhere like I just did. So that tells you, you know what? Go slowly, go slowly. And now let's add this to the uh, to my mixture, but not everything at once. Let's do it in four or five times so you can incorporate the flour nicely and gently, okay? So you just make sure you start very gently, slowly. It's always preferable to incorporate little at a time. Now you see, I'm not using the whisk. Eventually, this is going to start thickening and I don't want to end up with a thick batter within my whisk. Add a little bit more. Remember, don't forget, clean the side of your bowl and gentle, stay gentle. I can smell the pumpkin, I can smell the spice. This is going to be delicious. Start thickening nicely. A little bit more. As you add the flour, it starts becoming a little harder to mix, but don't, don't start going too fast, otherwise your flour is still gonna do like me. It's gonna fly all over. Okay, one more time and we're done. And here is our batter 
to it, all I have to add you know, are my chocolate chips. Just before I do that, I just want to make sure I don't have any flour visible on the side of my bowl. Okay, I just want to make sure everything is nicely incorporated. So make sure you clean up nicely. Uh, I have a nice smooth batter. Perfect. And now I'm, I'm going to add my chocolate chip, okay? My two cup, and I'm going to keep some extras to mix, to add to the top of uh, my muffins just before I put them in the oven. Oh, this is gonna be delicious. Uh, all right, so let's put them into our molds. So now we put it in the mold, now very gently. Uh, you don't want to overfill, but you still want them to be, uh, you want to have the print all over the muffin, the skull print all over the muffin. If you are using regular, uh, regular, a tin muffin, do not forget to uh, put a, a liner, otherwise uh, they'll probably stick. And then we are going to put them in the oven at 400 degree, 400 degree. All right, just try to, to work as clean as you can so you don't have too much of a mess. There you go. Make sure you spread it nicely. Very good. So let's cook and I'll see you. Uh, I will see you when these come out of the oven and we are going to work on the glaze. So we, uh, I just took them out of the oven. For, let's say about 17 minutes. Usually it takes about 16 to 18 minutes. Keep an eye on it. I always like to check before, uh, but the way you check, you grab a, a little paring knife like this, you just poke, okay, one of them, and you see it's nice and clean. If you still have some butter on it, just leave it an extra minute or two. But when they are ready, that's it, they're ready. But they are still very hot, so we need to have them cool down a little bit. So you don't want to, uh, we are going to do the glaze, but you don't want to put a hot muffin in the glaze, otherwise it's gonna run, it's not gonna look so good. But let's do the glaze now. All right, so to make this glaze, we are, so first make sure you sift your confectioner sugar, okay? So you don't have any, uh, any uh, lumps of sugar in it. Then you make sure you melt your butter. So I'm adding my melted butter and I'm going to add my uh, half teaspoon of vanilla. And I'm going to also add about a tablespoon of light corn syrup. Now, I'm going to, uh, before I add my milk, I'm gonna start making sure this sugar is melted, okay? So we are going to Gently, progressively, just make sure you mix the melted butter, the vanilla, and the light corn syrup. So at first it's gonna look pretty dry, but then as you start mixing it and mixing it, it's going to start looking pretty thick. So the goal right now is making sure our sugar is nicely mixed with the vanilla, the butter, and the corn syrup. Have to be a little patient. The confectioner sugar takes time to dissolve. Then you're gonna start getting a solid mass that turn a little brown because of the vanilla. And as you are there, just keep on stirring, keep on stirring nicely. Uh, 
Uh, so once you're there, we're going to add about half of your meal. So about like uh, one tablespoon of the milk. So about half work. And same thing, I'm going to start making sure that all my mixture is all wet. You see what happens? Very quickly, the sugar starts dissolving and now I have this thick paste, okay? But am I, what, what is the consistency of the glaze? Well, I want something that's completely uh, liquid, okay? And I don't want it to be too thick. This is way too thick. You see, it's going to a hole. It's just not, uh, not nice. So I don't want this. I'm going to add all my milk, but right now my focus is on getting rid of all those uh, conf uh, confectioner sugar lump I was talking about. And the only way to uh, get rid of it is just by mixing. Again, it takes time for the confectioner sugar to dissolve. And once you reach a more smooth consistency, then let's add the rest of our milk. We should have just the right consistency. Let's see. Oh, it's nice and smooth. Not many lumps. Just make sure with the back of the spoon huh, to get rid of these extra lumps. Again, you need to give it a solid minute or two, okay? that the sugar is nice and dissolved, but we're almost there, we're almost there. Our glaze is nice and smooth, our skulls, look at this, they look awesome. So all basically, so these need to be cooled before you put in the glaze, okay? So all you have to do is grab very gently, very delicately, you are going to just dip about halfway through, okay? And all you have to do is pick them up, okay? Nicely, let them turn around, okay? Take out the excess and simply let them dry. This is gonna take about a minute to dry and you don't have to do them all. You can have one white, one plain. And you know what? The other thing we can do is add a little bit of color. Let's see. Uh, let's make some white, some red. I'm going to use this. And that's really very spooky, an extra spooky skull. Let's take that one up. So again, just halfway through. Just make sure you cut them properly. And very delicately, you have them. This is gonna look very scary. Do them all. And if you have a, the regular muffin, all you have to do is uh, poke it in, okay? And, uh, and it's, gonna be a, it's gonna be a very spooky Halloween. And there you are, my friend. <laughs> and there we are with our Halloween spooky chocolate uh, pumpkin muffin. This will be a great success. Not only they look good, but they taste magnificent. My friends, the cooking lab, we wish you a happy spooky Halloween and hope to uh, cook with you very soon. Room on the grove. The witch had a cat, had a hat that was black, had a long ginger hair, in a braid down her back. How the cat purred and how the witch grinned as they sat on a broomstick and flew through the wind. How the witch wailed and how the cat spat when the wind blew so wildly it blew off the hat. Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the hat but no hat could be found. Then out of the bushes on thundering paws there bounded a dog with the hat in his jaws. He dropped it politely, 
then eagerly said, as the witch pulled the hat firmly down her head. I am a dog as keen as can be. Is there room on the broom for a dog like me? Yes, cried the witch and the dog clambered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the fields and the forest they flew. The dog wagged his tail and stormy the wind blew. The witch laughed out loud and held onto her hat, but away blew the bow from the braid just like that. Down, cried the witch, and they flew to the ground. They searched for the boat, but no boat could be found. Then out of the tree, with an ear-splitting shriek, there flapped a green bird with a bow in her beak. She dropped it politely and bent her head low, then said as the witch tied the braid to a bow, I am a bird as green as can be. Is there room on the broom for a bird like me? Yes, cried the witch. So the bird fluttered on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the reeds and the rivers they flew. The bird shrieked with glee and the stormy wind blew. They shot through the sky to the back of beyond. The witch clutched her bow but let go of her wand. Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand, wand could be found. There it goes. Down cried the witch and they flew to the ground. They searched for the wand, but no wand could be found. And all of a sudden, from out of the pond, leaped a dripping wet frog with a dripping wet wand. He dropped politely and then said with a croak, as the witch dried the wand on a fold of her cloak, I am a frog as clean as can be. Is there room on the broom for a frog like me? Yes, said the witch. So the frog bonded on. The witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh, they were gone. Over the mountains and moors they flew. The frog jumped for joy. The broom snapped in two. Down fell the cat and the dog and the frog. Down they went tumbling into a bog. The witch's half broomstick flew into a cloud and the witch heard a roar that was scary and loud. I am a dragon as mean as can be and witch and french fries taste delicious to me. No, cried the witch flying higher and higher. The dragon flew after her breathing out fire. Help, cried the witch, flying down to the ground. She looked all around, but no help could be found. The dragon drew near with a glint in his eyes and said, just this once, I'll have witch without fries. But just as he planned to begin on his feast, from out of the ditch rose a horrible beast. It was tall, dark, and sticky, and feathered and furred. It had four frightful heads. It had wings like a bird. And its terrible voice, when it started to speak, was a yowl and a growl and a croak and a shriek. It dripped and it squelched as it strode from the ditch, and it said to the dragon, Buzz off. That's my witch. The dragon drew back and he started to shake. I'm sorry, he sputtered. I made a mistake. It's nice to have met you, but now I must fly. And he spread out his wings and was off through the sky. Then down flew the bird and down jumped the frog. Down climbed the cat and whew, said the dog. And thank you, oh thank you, a grateful witch cried. Without you, I'd be that dragon's inside. Then she filled up her cauldron and said with a grin, find something, everyone, throw something in. So the frog found a lily, the cat found a cone, the bird found a twig, and the dog found a bone. They threw them all in and the witch stirred them well. And while she was stirring, she muttered a spell. 
iggity ziggity zaggity zoom then out rose a truly magnificent broom receipt for the witch and the cat and the dog a nest for the bird and a pull for the frog yes cried the witch and they all clambered on the witch tapped the broomstick and whoosh they were gone and that is the story of the room on the broom hospital as well so thank you so very much for everything you did to make this event such a great success but the reason we have this amazing dog park the reason we have this wonderful event is because we have most the most incredible town board and supervisor in the universe <laughs> so it's so great to be here at our first Halloween extravaganza Thank you to Kim Corcoran, Galante, and Stephanie Heaney, who played such an important role in making this all happen. Big dogs, little dogs, all dogs. We're so happy that the town of North Hempstead is now what I would call a really dog-friendly place. You know, they say dogs are man's best friend. They're women's best friend. They're all our best friends. And we're so happy to see all of these great dogs in costumes and all of their wonderful owners here with us today. But I also want to say a special thank you to Hicks Nursery and all state of Flora Park for their donations. Shelter Connection, which is always such a big part of everything we do at our North Hempstead Animal. Shelter, so let's hear it for Shelter Connections to play such a big role. At this last board meeting, we actually passed a resolution saying any of our veterans can come to our dog shelter and adopt dogs at no charge. Dogs, because we're so happy that they do, and we'll see you here next Halloween. 